Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I hope everything is okay in your life. In this video you will find an updated version of series I prepared in the previous years. You are in luck for listening to the explanation because I felt the need to quickly discuss the content of the video. Each video will feature an interview with a class master about either the succession or awakening versions of a class. All videos including the older ones will be available in the playlist you see on the screen. You can find the link of the playlist in the pinned comment section. The purpose of this video series is to help you understand the basic role of the class within the game. I must clarify that it is not a deeply detailed guide. You will watch an interview in a conversational style aimed at answering the fundamental questions of those interested in playing a class. The class masters featured are experienced players who have dedicated thousands of hours to their class and to the Black Desert Online. You may recognize some and not the others, but unfamiliarity does not make them bad players. All the class masters mentioned have proven themselves in Black Desert Online world. Please be respectful when sharing your thoughts. Enjoy watching. Hello guys, welcome. Today's guest is Enfield. How are you, Enfield? Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm pretty good. How about yourself? Thank you so much. May you please introduce yourself? Who is Enfield? Where are you from? Which server are you playing at? So yeah, I play on the EU server. Uh, I live in the UK. I've played BDO for eight years. And in those eight years since launch on EU and NA, I've always played Ranger. Thank you. How did you find out of BDO and what caught your interest to stay in BDO? I think the first I saw of BDO was a YouTube video from uh, the Korean beta. It was uh, to do with the character customization, and I think it was the most detailed and insane thing I'd ever, ever seen at the time. That was what first caught my interest, and then later I forgot about it, and some friends were saying they were going to go play it, and then I remembered the video, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll play. So that's how I started. Thank you. Have you ever taken a break from playing BDO? If so, what motivated you to come back? I can't say I've taken any serious breaks. I've played more intensely, I think, during periods of the game, but I don't think I've ever had an extended break where I, I haven't logged in for, I don't know, months or so. Uh, I don't think that's ever happened. Thank you. So you said that you're playing Ranger for eight years. Have you tried any other classes? Yeah, like loosely. I mean, I think most people we've 
that use a tagging system to explore other classes and, and play with them. There's a couple classes that I've always had a, like a little bit of a soft spot for, like Awakening Dark Knight. More modern classes, I think Awakening Wusa was fun when I played that. And right now I've got Awakening Megu tagged, but I uh, played Guardian, a couple others, but uh, Ranger's always been the main. I've never rolled the weapons away. Thank you. So what says the class you play apart from the other classes? What is a special thing in Awakening Ranger? I think Awakening Ranger just gives you some form of flexibility that you don't kind of get with a lot of classes. It has a lot of intricacies, flows and combos that just make it feel really fun. Uh, it has that kind of like agency where you always feel in total control over the class and you don't feel like the class plays itself for you or in one boring specific way. So I think that's why it's always been fun for me. Thank you. Is your class Evasion or Damage Reduction or both playable and why? Awakening Ranger is either. So it doesn't specifically have a defensive foundation like a free DR hit points or evasion, so to speak, like some classes have. But it does need to be built defensively, pretty standard when you're looking at uncapped Awakening Ranger. But I would say maybe it's more evasion only because the Awakening e-buff gives an evasion rate percent. So that's the only thing in the kit that actually leans into that. And then gearing wise, we do have the parrying dagger, which is a super high evasion dagger or offhand. So you could argue evasion. And there was a period where evasion was definitively better. But the way that the game has moved since then, DR has become coming more and more dominant for very geared players. Evasion still seems really strong the lower geared you are, but you know the higher geared players can usually deal with evasion quite well. A lot of classes get a lot of free evasion countering abilities or, or passives for accuracy. We do have the new update coming for how evasion will work, so I don't know how that's going to affect it, but you could build either DR or evasion. I think it works. Thank you. So what is your current gear score? Do you rush your gear progress or you just take it easy type of guy? So in the first few years of the game, I really played hardcore and I was always super high gear. And although my gear is good, it has fallen off. I would say the first time my gear really fell off was when Elvia was introduced to Serendia. And I think that's the first time we really got a huge bump in income. I think we went from like 200, 250 million an hour to suddenly people were making uh, 600, 700 million an hour, which at the time was a lot. Now, obviously, we're making billions. And I hated Elvia, so I really didn't want to grind it. So I would grind silly things like Turos, which it was still like 250 million an hour. But I think right now, progression has been something that I have sort of like moved on. There was a year where I really didn't progress a lot. Recently, I've gotten more things. Recent Pendebo, I bought a Pentungrab belt. Um, my actual overall gear score right now, I think, is 740. But there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I've failed every Ted Armor click I've ever made, <laughs> sadly. So uh, I might end up buying that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think at the moment, uh, in terms of PA taking away quite a lot of uncapped PvP opportunities, it feels kind of weird to gear for me personally. So that kind of motivation to progress where the world used to be dangerous and in the open world you'd have fights and uh, people would attack you all the time. You'd have GVGs all the time. That's what really motivated me to progress. And now it's like, oh, let me gear so I can <laughs> have a capped node war or something. So yeah, it's kind of where I'm at with that. Thank you. Is your class Nibi friendly on a scale of 1 to 10? How would you rate its difficulty? If you want, you can separate and compare it as Succession and Awakening. Succession, I think, is very easy to play. So it's, I think Ryloc talked about this, but yes, yeah, Succession, uh, very easy to get into. One of the reasons I actually don't like Succession as much is because it feels like it's missing a lot of a kit. It just feels like there's a sense that there's not as many abilities as it should have or something. But it's very easy to get into. It's a very great low-end class as well for low-end grinding. Uh, the high-end grinding also isn't com complicated, although not so efficient. Awakening is also easy to play early game. Uh, Waltz of Wind is a great little spinny skill you can spam. So anything you one shot, that's easy. In terms of end game PVE, probably it's on the higher end of difficulty, purely because there's no looping combo that a lot of players enjoy about their class. You know, you, you start with skill A, you finish with skill F, and then by the time you've done that, skill A is off cooldown. Ranger doesn't have that. So the combos are very fluid and change a lot. So I think that's more difficult because you have to animation cancel your skills so fast and in different kinds of ways. So that's difficult to learn, I think. And then PvP, I think Awakening Ranger would be difficult. You have a lot of things going on. Stamina management, what combos might be available to you to each class, making sure your combo doesn't get you killed from, you know, in, in Solar, for example, you might CC a player. That's great. You have great combo damage, but then your combos are locked in forward guard damage. So, you know, people get behind you instantly because everything's so fast. Ranger's really slow, so uh, we don't have that kind of fluidity. There's a lot of pressure on you all the time. So I think it's probably a little bit, PvP definitely would be more difficult to pick up than your 
your average class for a new player. So thank you. We talked about in general what Awakening Ranger can offer us. Let's dive in. We are curious about your thoughts on the PV situation of the class of Awakening Ranger. Could you provide us with a detailed information separately for early, mid, and end game? Um, so early game, yeah, pretty easy. Like I said, Waltz of Wind can be spammed and do enough for most early game grind spots where you sort of one shot the mobs. So that's very easy, I think very fine. Um, and because Waltz of Wind is a mana skill, you can do lots of things to get mana back on hit, spirit perfumes, skill add-ons, um, infinite mana pot if you have it, lots of different things. So that's okay. In terms of medium game, that's where Awakening Ranger is at its worst. So the reason for that is because some grind spots, you need a lot of mobility. Ranger is very slow. The other problem is medium grind spots, what you want is like sort of one or two skills that instantly nuke the pack because they're tanky but not quite like really tanky so awakening ranger doesn't really have like the big aoe's that would be great for that so she's not so good at like medium tier grinding realistically speaking the earlier you get into gaifin the better for awakening ranger and that's when the class really comes alive so grinding uh super end game now so you're looking at like dekia cyclops dekia olens all the ulakita spots things like that the mobs are really tanky which is great for awakening ranger because she's a real send out your dps and and set up class you know so it really benefits you when a clock when, when a, a target is really tanky when when you sort of one or two hit the enemy it's not so good so a lot of these spots now don't require huge aoe unlike when dekia thornwood was the best for example that was really bad she doesn't really have the aoe to deal with that so yeah end game is really good now for awakening ranger very high apm a lot of work but the results are pretty good i don't know if you agree or not I would love to see maybe 5 to 10 percent more DPS for especially an endgame spot because, you know, the APM is just strangely everything. When you check other classes with very low APM doing slightly better DPS, it's a little bit, you know, I would love to see it. Yeah, I think there's always that argument, isn't there, where if I have to put so much more work into grinding, shouldn't I get rewarded more than a class that puts in half the effort? Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, I think that... Definitely they could smooth out the mid game, so maybe some AoE increases. I don't really think increasing the AoE would affect PvP too much. Um, I mean, obviously I'm always aware that something you could do in PvE could improve PvP. Now, if you increase AoE naturally, you would think. But I don't think really Awakening Ranger would change much if the AoEs were bigger to help with that. As for endgame, could you lower the APM? I think you have to fundamentally change so much about the class. Uh, I get it. Some of the reasons that some classes are, are low APM is because they sit in animations for so long well ranger doesn't do that she animation cancels through her skills so fast which is why she doesn't have a looping combo if we sat in these animations the cooldowns would be fine normally for a looping combo so i just i, I don't know if it's possible to lower the apm and um i think the thing is like for me what's really fun about ranger is playing black shrine she's really good at black shrine bosses and i think when you're fighting difficult bosses with mechanics that it feels fun to actually have that level of extra control and input over your class it's when you're going around in circles <laughs> doing normal pve that that gets real tiring so yeah i'm not sure that that's fixable to be honest with you so yeah i don't know so if you say that end game is okay you know Maybe for mid game spots, you know, you generally need them to aggro. Maybe a town skill would be okay. Infinite town skill or Cyclea, for example. I think yeah. I think in general, if the, if a lot of these grind spots where we're talking about, like you said, Sakraya, if, if these mobs were, were coded to move faster, to group up faster, that would be significantly better because the the sort of unloading of damage can begin much earlier for other classes because the AOEs are so much bigger than Ranger's much more narrow focused AOE. So if the mobs grouped up faster, that would definitely help her at some of these grind spots for sure. Like I said, in general, if they just slightly boosted the AOE size of a few of the abilities, um, which again, she's a she's a single target combo class. You know, this isn't going to affect PvP really. She doesn't trade damage into enemies. So uh, yeah, I, th I think that that's something for sure that they could do if they would to like code it. I think Succession Ranger definitely needs some kind of aggro taunting to allow it to get back attacks because that's where Succession really falls off at end game or even mid well, not so much mid game, but more end game. Would that help Awakening Ranger? In mid game, I don't know. The, the mobs die so fast, I'm not sure that it would really help her too much, but yeah. Okay. So let's talk about PvP. We are curious about your thoughts on the PvP situation of Awakening Ranger. Could you provide us with the detailed information separately for 1v1, 1vx, AOS, 5v5, Glit League, and all the Siege and War of Roses? So for 1v1, Awakening Ranger is that's her strongest sort of field, is, is dealing with 1v1. She's a great duelist. What she does best is when other classes attack her. So the, the one issue she'll have in 1v1s is that some classes 
are ranged, which I know is ironic because she's ranger, but she doesn't deal with the ranged class as well. This is simply because we just don't have the mobility or speed to chase them down. They can kite infinitely. So that's a kind of a problem. In terms of anything else, there are a few classes that will give you a kind of a rough time and some classes that are a little bit closer to 50-50. But uh, in general, she's very, very good at 1v1. So she wouldn't really need any significant improvement there at all because that's where she's best. Again, the, the dealing with ranged classes would be leaning into part of the why she struggles a little bit in 1vx so if you were to say group fights maybe 3v3s maybe more guild league or whatever her issue is that she's so slow uh, now people like to point out how good ranger is in 1v1 and she is super good how good her combos are and everything but the problem is she doesn't have the mobility to deal with skirmishing fights uh, she's out of stamina she's slow the dash is unprotected which is your fastest mobility this is very different there are other classes that are really really good and exceptional 1v1ers that don't struggle in the same regard when it comes to group fights so if you look at say an awakening nova very very good at 1v1 incredible at group fights you know hashes shins and uh, i mean everything in the game bar maybe sorks uh, are faster uh so it's it's difficult in a game where mobility has been power crypt so much that not having that mobility is kind of a difficult thing for her uh she's sort of left in the dust and because the protection chaining is so good on awakening ranger but it uses so much stamina uh when you're dashing slowly unprotected to try and catch up to people you use all your stamina to do that and then you have to use the stamina if there's anything there's a couple classes in this game also deal with similar stamina issues like uh lawn for example uh but because lawn's instant burst mobility is so good and so fast and gets you so far away you can kind of manage the fact that you might be out of stamina after that awakening ranger doesn't deal with it so well and because she doesn't damage trade either that's kind of her issues so she, she is viable and playable and and can be fun and it feels really good when a bunch of players are attacking you and you can sort of outplay them time your your, your combos because her protection is so good in that kind of scenario when people are pressuring you that's what she wants all the time when she has to pursue other people mm, relocate that's when she's at her weakest so I think a very easy solution for that for Awakening Ranger is to turn the dash when it's not iframe instead of using stamina when it's unprotected completely is just make it use mana like it used to. And so that would allow us to not have sort of you'd still be moving very slowly comparatively to other classes mobility. I mean, what they gave Valks, I think, is still disgusting, but you would still be really slow, but at least you wouldn't be out of stamina by the time you actually got to the new fight location or whatever. So that might help her a little bit because what allows she has to be built defensively. I think we kind of I talked a little bit about that earlier. She has to be built in a hybrid defense role, um, which means you lose some of that really lethal comboing. If you built an Awakening Ranger like a Succession Ranger, everyone would be a threat, right? You could really combo just about anybody. It's kind of a weird situation where you can't really build that way, though, because she would just die. She has no mobility, so she's just going to take too much damage while you're protecting yourself. So you have to, I don't know, you got, kind of have to build defensively to survive long enough to combo somebody, but that loses a lot of your combo threat because obviously you have to put on DP equipment, uh, the other, you know, like uh, accessories. Yeah, it's kind of a weird one. I've always been in favor of nerfing classes, but people don't like that. So <laughs> PA doesn't seem to like that. I, you know, I think classes have gotten power creeped way too much. Uh, mobility is the main one, but yeah, you kind of need that mobility to compete with these classes. If she had that mobility, she could build more offensively, get in, get out, that kind of thing. If you can get in, but then you can't get out, then you have to build defensively. So yeah, that's a long-winded sort of state of ranger. So okay, I mean, I uh, I can maybe summarize it like that. From one v one, you are strongest for the large scale. It's getting worse and worse and worse. It's because you do not have something to dominate the large scale battle. That's as, that's what I understand. And also, people crying about Awakening Ranger. She is very strong at one v one, but let her be strongest because that's the only point that she can shine. I mean, uh, people shouldn't cry about that. Any class in the game, if a class is just offering you something at some point, best or one of the best, then it can be okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, she, yeah, exactly. You have um, you have classes that are also really, really good at one v ones and don't struggle so much in skirmishing. It's not that she's unplayable. It's that, that if you were to be like, okay, let's pick a class for this kind of activity, she's not the first class you'd go to for skirmishing. Um, there's a couple really talented rangers that do pretty well in Solar, like exceptionally talented. But there's plenty of classes that are also good at one v one, but then you know they're really high ranking on Solar for like people that just vote and reroll to them. So in that way, she doesn't feel so modern in the sense that she can do loads of things. So, but she's really fun so you know <laughs> thank you is there a significant strong aspect of the class you're playing or significant weakness what is the strongest thing for you what is the weakest thing for you 
Ooh, um, yeah, so the strongest thing I think is probably the lethal combo potential. There are plenty of classes in this game that are super well protected. That's sort of modern BDO classes are so overprotected in my opinion, including my own. But the comboing is really something that she does super well. A lot of classes have like nukes they can unload, but then they sort of, it's the combo sort of peter off in terms of the damage. Uh, Ranger's combo is so good. Again, it does get lessened if you have to build it in a defensive spec as well, because obviously you lose damage, but it is so good. And that's probably the strongest attribute. Um, and yeah, so her weakest point is just, it's got to be mobility. Uh, she's just, she feels very archaic in terms of modern BDO. It shouldn't feel that way. I do think classes should be slower. I think stamina management should be important. But when that's not every class, in fact, it's not most classes now, it does feel worse. I think if you're one of those classes still deals with that. So I mean, the old veteran and old, old players think in the same way. It's because I also want to see nerf in the game. Nerf is also a way to balance the game. I totally agree. I mean, the power creep, the, the new classes, every one of them protected, insane mobility, very good in like a new and unique abilities, mechanics. And when you check the old classes, they're just looking at you and they feel like a stepchild when you check them. Yeah, I mean, so, some old classes are okay, right? You know, Zerkers are still doing extremely well for themselves. Near on hero classes of BDO. Valkyrie has everything you could possibly want in a single class. But for the most part, yeah, you're looking at the modern classes and you think, wow, each one that gets introduced, they've got some insane mobility power creep built into the kit. And it, it's like, okay, that doesn't feel so good for me. And it's, yeah, um, I would I would happily see my own class nerfed. I think that um, it, it's... It's it's like if you took a class now and you ported it back like five years, it would absolutely dominate. The weakest class in the game today would absolutely dominate five years ago. I, I do know that Perlibus does this because nobody likes to see their class nerfed. Everybody thinks their class is the weakest class and all this, that, and the other. But I think we have to look at ourselves and be like, wow, you know, do you remember when Musa and May were in the game and they were the fastest classes? You know, maybe you had Warriors for mobility was pretty good, but in general, they were the fast super class all around the mobility. And now look at it, you know, it's a bit crazy. So yeah, I, I would be happy for that. But I think that most players are not. And I think Perlibus is scared because in 2018, when they did do that, uh, and maybe they overstayed stepped and did it to extreme but when they nerfed the classes in 2018 it was so extreme that i think a lot of people quit because it was just so intense and and maybe perlobus is worried about that kind of reaction so it's always about buff 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 maybe so are there any classes that clearly dominate awakening ranger and are there any classes that awakening ranger clearly dominate them counter matchups Okay, yeah, so I guess, yeah, range classes. Awakening Zerkos can just stay ranged if they want. And Titan Blow is too good for us to really do too much about. So a lot of classes that have that kind of mobility could stalemate the ranger. You might not be able to lose, but you can't win either. If they just want to run away, you can't chase them down. In terms of classes that don't have ranged, but are still difficult, sometimes Hashishin, uh, DK can also be difficult to deal with. Those are the two that stand out in terms of classes that are not specifically ranged. I would say in terms of domination, there's a lot of classes that we probably have like a 60, 40, 70, 30 odds against. Classes that we're pretty much guaranteed to win. Awakening mages aren't really a challenge, whereas Succession is if they play well. All but the best Awakening Valks are usually pretty okay to deal with. Most of them don't focus on 1v1s though. I expect that's probably why. Yeah, I think that's... Those are the ones that I really like immediately come to my head if I saw them. I'm feeling pretty confident already. Striker and Mystic, I think Awakening Ranger can counter quite well, whereas other classes may struggle against them. So yeah, that's that's off the top of my head. That's what comes to mind. Thank you. So is there a mechanic or skill in your class that you would like to be buffed or nerfed? Yeah, like I talked about the dash, I just think in general, you can buff the dash to be mana and unprotected still, because uh, when you dash, it's iframe, and then it uses stamina, and then you keep dashing, it's unprotected, and it uses stamina still. I, I think if it was still unprotected, but uses mana, that would help us a little bit relocating for skirmishing fights. And it doesn't buff the 1v1, because nobody in their right mind is going to be unprotected dashing <laughs> in a 1v1. So that's fine. Call of the Earth, I think, is the accuracy buff we have, is where we plant the tree. So when they started doing these reworks, I think it was two years ago now, actually, it's been crazy. They, they changed it so it was going to be a party buff now originally the, what the way the skill worked was you could spam it as much as you like and it would give you i think it was 10 seconds or maybe it was still 20 seconds i don't remember accuracy buff but then they changed it it was going to be a party buff so you buffed your allies so they threw on a one minute cooldown it still lasts 20 seconds now it gives all accuracy nine percent so it's 
But then they changed their mind, so it's not a party buff anymore. And now it still has the one minute cooldown. I don't know if they forgot, but yeah, so it's a one minute cooldown, last 20 seconds, and it gives us accuracy 9%. Uh, that is worse than the Valkyrie one, which lasts much longer and uh, I think could be used basically on cooldown and is a party buff. So that feels weird because you already have a class that has all these incredible PA, super armor heals. Yeah. It, you know, so that feels quite bad. I feel I do personally. I'm a fan of diversifying buffs. We're supposed to have like no holy trinity. If other classes had different buffs, I mean, you know, warrior has a DP buff. That's fine. Uh, Sorks have AP buffs. So there's a couple of them. So I think it would be cool if we would diversify, and each class could bring something unique to a uh, their allies and and give some buffs. Because I mean, I know we have shy, but then. Yeah, it would be nice, I think, if we diversified what other classes could bring to help. Yeah. Um, so Tamer you know, as well. Tamer has the Haylink, yeah. so Absorb. Awakening Ranger or Ranger is only designed to the fastest runner in the game. Maybe movement speed buff for party would be okay. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. These kind of things I think would um would be quite cool and, and to 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 take support skills. I mean, we could talk all day about the um <laughs> the uh the ability to heal difference between different classes, but I don't want to get into that. But I do think that like just little minor buffs, like you said, movement speed. Even a ranger could buff our allies with movement speed, right? Um, yeah. And actually, that is the only other thing I would bring up is that our passives are not super awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we have six ranged AP and three hundred stamina. Archer has twelve ranged AP and five percent accuracy. So yeah, uh, passives. I actually think we should be able to choose our passives, like an investment thing where you choose, do I want an evasion rate passive, an accuracy rate passive? Do I want HB, DR? I think we should be able to, be able to choose our passives, but uh, failing that, I just, yeah, the passives on Ranger aren't so great. Thank you. Can we get a brief summary of the good and bad things overall? For example, let's say that I'm an average player or a returnee or some kind of newbie. What Awakening Ranger can offer me? What should I expect from Ranger? So Ranger is fun for me and I think others is because she's so dynamic and has so much depth. Uh, and I think that's really fun. I, I don't enjoy when classes are so one dimensional and easy to play and almost play the game for you. And that's what Ranger would really give to you, Awakening. It's so interesting and and there's such a high skill ceiling. I'm an experienced Ranger. I, like I said, I played the game for eight years, but there's Rangers that are better than me. Oh my God. Like some guys so talented. Uh, shout out to my boy Vamps. Really, really amazing. I was with him in Orca. So good. And a couple others that you might also recognize, uh, like Flannels, for example. These guys, amazing. And that level of play, you don't really get that as much from a lot of other classes. Like sure, there's people that will take a class that is automatically very easy and good to play. And they'll that little bit more more out of it but um ranger has that really super high skill ceiling and and it'll always feel different and dynamic and and the fights will always feel different and the, there's so many different ways you can animation cancel each skill and uh that's really what you'll will it feels fun to play it feels elite to play i don't know how to describe it in any other way and i think that's something that people really get a kick out of and that translates also to pve although i don't really care about like oh, let's see how much trash per hour i can get i do like going for faster black shrine bosses that feels fun to me but but in general if you are someone that really cares about pve that there, there is a lot you could really get out of the class in that sense too uh at, at the end game is like oh let's see how really fast i can do this or how quickly i can down a cycle clubs i don't know so yeah she's a lot of fun there's a lot to learn and i think that's cool thank you so we talk in general about awakening ranger all the infos that you gave us priceless let's talk about game itself what are your thoughts on video's current situation from past until now video is one of those interesting games where they make such great strides in some areas of the game you think wow this is so much better than it used to be and then in other ways it it, it feels like it's lost some charm and character in other or other respects i'm not a doomer or a gloomer i don't play the game for 10 hours a day and say how terrible it is and tell new players not to play i think it's an awesome game but i would say that quality of life wise has improved so massively i wouldn't want a bdo classic like we got with world of warcraft or with or with runescape or any of these games right where people are clamoring for how the game used to be i think bdo has improved so much in so many areas i don't think classic bdo would be fun however uh, if you're a pvp oriented player i do think the game feels worse than it ever has i think i alluded to it earlier when i was most motivated to grind and get better gear it's because i really felt rewarded for getting more gear and that really felt good when you would get some gear gear and it would really feel powerful and it was immediately effective in the open world you'd had that all the node wars and sieges were uncapped i am a fan of capped content in terms of solar it has to be capped because how could you possibly measure a balance of skill if you have gear involved that's fine 
But I do think that only tier one node wars should exist as the cap. I think, well, you could essentially just have tier one and tier two node wars, realistically. One is capped, one is not. I would like to see more uncapped content. I have to be honest. I think that you should be rewarded for progressing. It's an MMO, uh, you know, um, that gear should feel good. And uh, yeah, so that's that's something that really, I think... I've seen a lot of feedback on. They have this new Node War system coming that hasn't done so awesome on Korea. But really, all I've really wanted is more uncapped options. You know, um, I was previously in a big EU siege guild, but I was having real issues with FPS. My game wasn't doing well. I'm not entirely sure what the issue was, but I would have frame freezes and lag, and it was really frustrating. Plus, I had to play Succession. I left to join a smaller scale guild so that I wouldn't have to deal with the lag, and also I could play Awakening. But the only options really are Tier One guild I'm in now is really nice, really great people. But I wish it was un uncapped <laughs> i'd love for like 25 30 man uncapped content um we used to have that many years ago and it was so fun so yeah that's kind of where i'm at with that i, I just think progression is the number one thing pearl abyss needs to make sure they get right because that's so important in an mmo and i think on the pve end as well i think it's important that they do something with progression i think uncapped black shrine bosses where if you're lower geared you might be able to take the boss on get a slow time but if you're really 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 good at it you can do it but then gearing makes that easier and the rewards are really good i think that could be good for pve too so yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at i think game looks great in many other areas though thank you what do you think that PA company does well and what it, uh, it does bad about updates? Let's say that you are in ch you were in charge and let's say that you are a new Mr. J. What would you like to add or remove something? One thing to add, one thing to remove. Well, it's not specifically add or remove, but I think Pearl Abyss should be globally releasing expansions and content like that. I think this Korea favoritism needs to end when it comes to content, especially when NA and EU specifically fund 60% of the game. I think that when you have a new region come out and you have it on Korea for a few months, I mean, it used to be worse. It used to be over a year, many years ago for like the older expansions. I don't think that feels nice. I think that insults a lot of your customer base. Nobody likes to see all the content spoiled of a new region or expansion right before you're ever going to get it. <laughs> you know, for example, we're going to get the new Black Shrine guild bosses. Uh, we're going to get all kinds of new stuff with Ultra Blood, potentially with the new region. We're going to discover what Fallen God weapons we'll need. And, uh, but we'll know all that because the Koreans will know it. There's no discoverability in BDO if you're not a Korean. I think that really sucks. In terms of what they're doing well, I think they're listening to to players a lot when it comes to quality of life we'd all like and the game feels much better to play than it ever used to when it comes to quality of life and i think that they deserve credit for um, actually improving the life of the game when it comes to things that were inconvenient that they haven't just thrown a pearl shop solution all the time they have sometimes <laughs> but not most of the time most of the time it is stuff that people have been asking for and they've actually delivered on so i think that's really good um so yeah in terms of like if i could add anything to the game that's really difficult <laughs> there's too many things I, I i think i listened to rylock's interview and he was talking exactly about what i talk about on stream all the time which is people love cosmetic stuff give us more things to aim for people went nuts when they added orzeka orzeka doesn't feel so special anymore though it's still cool but that kind of thing is crazy people love that stuff i always thought it'd be cool if we could get like the equivalent of the pokemon system for horses so you get like a rare chance to proc a shiny horse which is just a different skin it doesn't have better stats it's just a different skin we have the nightmare horses in the game and there's only two of them and they were given away two different occasions that's really cool but i do kind of think it would be cool if you can consistently progress through the horse system and all that stuff and then end up just trying to fish for like a different color yeah things like that people go crazy for it different cosmetics and stuff so yeah anyway that's kind of what i would like uh if i had anything removed falks berserkers shy <laughs> uh no in all seriousness i don't know uh to be honest with you I, it feels like you'd have to like i'd have to like really sit down for like weeks to think about the one most important thing to remove so i think that's just a couple things that kind of irritate but yeah no one thing that like sticks out what about resistance i hate resistance in pvp i hate that rng is a factor in whether you win or lose however i think there are greater issues in pvp i haven't always said that but i so for example, I think like build diversity right now kind of sucks. And I think it would be really cool if you built like accessories that gave you HP back. Like they weren't tanky because they gave you DR evasion. They just give you a faster HP regeneration. But then you can't add that because some classes can heal themselves way too good already. So how could you possibly do something like that? So I would actually, and then, then there's obviously the, what we already talked about, the mobility power creep in the game. Um, so the, I just think the game is too fast for its own good in a lot of regards. So 
yeah, man. Resistance is a good shout, though. I definitely, yeah, that's up there. And it's annoying in PvE, too, because some classes are so protected. They don't have to build resistance crystals into their crystals when they grind certain spots. I mean, I like Dekia Turos. We need, like, three different types of resistances. What is that? Why is that fun? Why? So, yeah, <laughs> it's a good shout, though. Yes, you have to sacrifice someone. I mean, a victim should be shy. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the this is a little off topic, obviously, but uh, uh, the the I like the idea that we have a support class. I don't like that it's so mandatory for any kind of group PvP or group PVE. That does suck. I don't know how you fix shy with it being in the game. It does suck though. I get it. So, what advice would you like to give to newbies, returnees, and other players in the game? Enjoy it. I think this is true of a lot of games. But when you're a veteran player. And you sort of like run your course of new things to do. You know, it's it's different. But if you're a new player or if you're a returning player after a long time, there's so much new stuff, man. Get into it. It's that I would love to re-experience, you know, if you could like wipe your memory. I think you, people think this is like movies that they loved or like games that they played for the first time. If you could wipe your memory and re-experience it, I would love to do that for some of BDO stuff. I think that don't try to rush, get on that treadmill and oh, got to get the gear grind going, right? Like just enjoy the stuff that there is in the game. There's still stuff I actually haven't done that i'd like to do still i was kind of hoping that they would do this thing where they said they were uh, they're gonna let us buy carracks from other people i don't even want to barter i just want a big ship but for the most part it's like yeah i've done things that i want to do uh and I, i've got like gearing but then i you know i don't have the there's no uncapped for me to do but i think for a new player or returning player there's so much stuff to do so just you know enjoy that don't immediately be like oh okay let me get my spreadsheet out this is what i need to progress on you know go do what's fun to you you know enjoy the content that is actually there thank you we are reaching the end of the interview. Is there anything else you would like to add before we finish? Anything I would like to add? Hmm. Not really. I just, thanks for watching. Uh, I rambled on a lot, so appreciate people that are still here. Thanks for watching Quendi's content. He does really good stuff. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I want to thank to Enfield. He shared his thoughts and experience. Eight years is it's enormous for an MMORPG and all of the experience, all of the infos are priceless. I want to thank to him and you guys just checking the social links on the screen right now. Please go check his stream. He has a YouTube channel. He's sharing videos. He's sharing his thoughts. And on the stream, he is helping everyone in his stream. Whenever you go there, whenever you check his, whenever you look, you will understand what I'm saying. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys, do not forget. Video is just a game. Have a nice game.